thank you for being here. Uh, again, I feel like I'm in a classroom, but uh, don't worry, I won't bore you to death. And, uh, you know, I normally don't wear this t-shirt, but when I do, it's a data cancel. <laughs> no, 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 no heckling, JD. <laughs> Is this going to be on the test? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I was talking to I was talking to Sean Taylor earlier before uh, earlier this morning, and I, I told him because I do you know a few things. I I have spent a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to talk about today, and he says, yeah, like about ten years, and that's actually true, if not more. Um, I've been in this space since probably 2009. Um, so I don't know if you heard the keynote before when they were talking about strata conferences, right? Like I actually attended those conferences. Again, being involved in the data science community. Uh, so, and I've been a data practitioner for a really, really long time. I won't do that. Um, again, I am representing multiple organizations, but really what I'm talking about today, it's, it's just my thinking, right? It's my passion. Uh, I'm really vocal about this because I think it's extremely, extremely important. So raise your hand if you know this. Oh my God. Okay, so not even half the room. Wow. <laughs> All right, let me ask a different question. Who, in the, in the data science journey, who considers themselves sort of like a beginner? Okay. And you haven't seen this? Oh my God. All right. And kind of like mid-career maybe? Okay. And then sort of, I don't know, like advanced or wherever. Not that it matters, but. Okay. Back in 2010, our good friend Drew Conway, who JD and I know, he used to run the bar meetup for some time in New York City. And he posted a blog post that said, all right, guys or gals, or everyone, um, this is what data science is. It was the, Venn the famous Venn diagram of data science, which listed three skills, or three sets of skills. Hacking skills, math and stats knowledge, and substantive expertise. In the early 2010s, you would see this in probably every single data science talk, right? I'm surprised, again, I'm really surprised that you haven't seen it. Anyway. We're going to do an evolution of this because obviously things have changed. And you know, there's a couple of things in the middle, right? Like data science is this intersection of a venogram, danger zone, eh, traditional research, and machine learning. You know, for what it's worth, whether they're right or wrong, this was, this was our roadmap. It was kind of like a very reductionist roadmap at the beginning of time. <laughs> Folks, if you feel like this right now in your data science career, you're not alone, OK? Uh, we've all suffered imposter syndrome. We have no idea what data science is. We have no idea what the, being a data practitioner is, even today. 14 years later, after we had that roadmap, even today, we still don't have a clue of what it is. And if you've been in this track earlier today, every single talk has hit on these threads. So there's something going on over here. But don't worry, you're not alone. Let me take a few steps back here. So um, when I used to run the, when Myself and a couple other folks, we used to run the R meetup and the data science meetup in the DC area. Kind of in the 20, we started doing this in around 20, 2010, the meetups, 2010, 2011. And um, we would have events, and then people would actually come up to us and say, you know, hey, I'm looking for, I guess at the time the hot skill was an ML engineer before it was an ML engineer, I don't know, whatever, like, or I'm looking for whatever type of thing. Like people would actually come to us thinking that we were like recruiters and be like, I'm looking for XYZ. I mean, like, who, who do you know? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, we organize events. We don't, I mean, we know the people who come to events, obviously, but do we really know their skills in the background? Everyone's calling themselves a data scientist, again, circa 2012, roughly. But again, we were all talking about it. We were all doing it, but no one had a clue <laughs> what it was. Still the same. Anyway, um, so back in 2012, we did a survey. We said, you know, we're going to do something about this. And we, we, we tweeted about this. Uh, we, we created a survey where we said, hey, we want you to tell us not tools-based, but like kind of skills-based, um, not, not necessarily focused on tools, but if you're calling yourself a data scientist, what exactly is your skill set? So we, we tweeted this, we posted this uh, over a period of a few weeks. We got the data. We got about 250 responses around the globe. Obviously, you know, not necessarily a representative sample, but again, it was like the first time I think anyone actually collected enough, collected data about it. So we crunched the numbers. We did all sorts of stuff. Uh, this is actually published by O'Reilly. Well, actually, we presented this at a conference called Data Gotham in New York City. And uh, I believe Mike Wakitas from O'Reilly was there. And he approaches, he's like, hey, we want to publish this. So they published this. And this has become kind of, this sort of became the manual, interestingly. And I wasn't expecting this for all sorts of data practitioners at the time. 
what's interesting here is when we kind of what you see this here, there were four personas and five skill areas. So when we crunched the numbers and we did uh, we did non-negative matrix factorization, and I'll spare you with the details, but here's here's the, here's the end point. So we we discovered sort of four clusters um, that sh showed different variations in skills. Uh, obviously, like there's a data business person, which is kind of think of it as like a business analyst, much more business focused, right? But maybe has some tech skills, was able to write some. Python or R code or whatever, maybe do some dashboarding at the time, blah, blah, blah. As you can see, right, like stats, ML, big data are sort of smaller compared to everything else. There's the data creative, which is kind of a mix of everything. Um, think of this as like the very versatile person, like jack of all trades, who was skilled in not just R, SQL, Python, whatever, but maybe a little bit of infrastructure stuff, maybe a little bit of cloud, all sorts of things. Uh, the data developer probably focused a lot more on at the time, maybe relational database stuff, so kind of uh, DBAs, you know, maybe doing data infrastructure. Again, there's a lot of stuff going on right now here at this conference around data infrastructure. Ten years ago, was very, the landscape was very different. And then there's like the data researcher. Think of these as folks that maybe are coming out of academia where, you know, maybe PhD students, whatever. And then there's a different skill. So anyway, just I, I want to set the stage because these are the skills that we looked at back then. Um, these are just in alphabetical order, right? But these are focused on, we really focus more on like the skills, not necessarily the tools themselves. So this really sets the stage for where we're going next. All right. <laughs> Here we are in 2024, and things have changed a lot. So what has happened, what I have seen happen is, is this, right? So in the beginning, right, when data science came out, we had the Venn diagram, and then everyone, you know, what was like the hot skill at the time? SQL, R, Python. Scikit-learn, so pandas, I mean, kind of like your basic things. And, you know, a lot of folks were doing data science on their laptop, right? I don't think even Ju Jupyter wasn't even a thing back then. <laughs> so people were writing Python code, maybe with IPython or whatever. But the point is, like, these are the skills. But I'm going to get sort of like the different eras of data science as I've, I've, as I've seen them. Uh, if you don't agree with what I'm showing you, that's fine. This is just, again, this is just representative. Uh, by all means, not factual. But what I want to show you is this, right? So around 2010, kind of the big data stack was very popular, right? As you heard earlier today, Hadoop came out of Yahoo in 2004 or 5 out of the MapReduce paper, but it really started picking up. Only the big tech companies were using Hadoop at the time, but then Hadoop started proliferating. And then if you looked at job postings, et cetera, like these were the skills. It was this plus this. Then we enter the Kaggle era, right? And then everyone started doing data science competitions, machine learning competitions, and you had to know it. XGBoost, because XGBoost was the winning algorithm in pretty much all the competitions. Uh, you know, somewhere in the middle, someone said we need to do data products, so obviously you had to know some product management, maybe, or whatever. Deep learning era, right? <laughs> so obviously deep learning's been around for a long time, but it didn't get popularized until probably I'd say 2013, 2013. I don't want to say popularized, accessible. Why? Because uh, PyTorch was published, then TensorFlow, right, all of these deep learning frameworks that were accessible to people doing stuff on their own machines. So again, things like that. Uh, then we enter the MLOps era. I don't know when the MLOps era started, but again, just another set of skills, right? Now you have to be taking a model, now you have to put it into production, you have to manage it, you have to track it, you have to understand how to interface with APIs, all these sorts of things. Cloud era, right? Not cloud era, cloud era. <laughs> um, so I've been using cloud stuff since late 2000s, so since around 2009. I actually ran my first Hadoop job with an R script with JD's help back in 2009, so I'm dating myself. Nonetheless, cloud has evolved, right? At the time, you could spin up a VM. Great, awesome, I did a lot of that. Now, you know, we're sort of more like in the fast pass era, but even when you're doing stuff in the cloud, you have to understand, and I do this for, you know, on a daily basis for work, so uh, you have to understand networking, security, infrastructure as code. Responsible AI, right? So probably a few years ago, we started hearing about, okay, bias in our models. We have to be responsible, right? Every time we use a model, we have to understand how it was trained, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here are some of the skills. Obviously, today, we're living in the Gen AI world, right? So, you know, the point is, even though these skills were, like, this is like the peak, what I would say the peak of hotness, they're still relevant today, and they're cumulative. Am I wrong? I want to hear that again? No. Okay, good. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so in 2024, the hard truth, we've taken this thing that we've called data science for whatever it is, you know, and it basically becomes the data practitioner brewer, right? We just throw everything in the pot, and there you go, right? And here's like the caption I use Dolly 3 to generate, do the image generation. 
But okay, here we are. I got to have this. So in 2012, right? Um, and again, maybe those folks that hadn't seen the uh, the Venn diagram maybe haven't seen this. But you know, we have always been known for making fun of ourselves. That's I think one of our best qualities. I, I really believe it. Um, and you know, so Josh Wills, he he was at Cloudera for a while. Then he did all sorts of stuff. But he tweeted, you know, this is tweet is from 2012. Data scientist, person who's better at statistics than any software engineer and better at software engineering than any statistician. This had actually a lot of truth back then. It kind of still does, but again, I'm not here to define things. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm trying to tell it, telling you as, as, as I've seen it over the course of the last 15 years. In the bottom is a collection of tweets. Uh, I don't remember who, who created these. I've actually had this GIF for a long time, but data scientist is a data analyst who lives in California. Uh, my, my favorite down here, data science is statistics on a Mac. So, I mean, <laughs> there was some truth to this, but you know, this is what data scientists were defining themselves way back when. Here's what I think we are today. So, we are an octopus, right? You know, and we're running all these different hands on one hand, and we're doing like really complex tasks, right? On one hand, we're training an LLM on distributed GPUs, right? On the other hand, we're learning Rust. Okay, we know R and Python. Now, now we got to learn Rust. Maybe you know, Polars is a great example. Um, we're presenting, we're building RAG, right? Uh, retrieve augmented generation so that we use LLMs. You know, we're doing all sorts of tasks, right? Again, because all of these skills are building on top of one another, and we are expected to some degree to do this today. Maybe, maybe not. The part of the thing is that as an instructor, right? One of the things that I have struggled over the last 10 years is how do you teach this effectively? Because it's, you know, it, and, and I'll talk a lot, I'll talk about that a little bit in a second. Again, other memes, but you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about the hiring practices because we know they are broken. Yes, Maggie, oh, halfway point, ooh. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got a lot to cover, but I'm not gonna talk about this, but essentially here's sort of a couple of memes, right? Here's the interview, here's the job, right? There's your transformer architecture, there's the job, just import transformers. <laughs> There is like all of the, and, and this is true, right? I, I have been through many interviews over the course of my life, and I, maybe not these technologies, but things were quite different. I would get asked, like, what's a B tree? I'm like, I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> really, I don't. Um, we fucked up, <laughs> all right? We did. Somewhere along the way, we screwed up as a community, right? We asked too much of ourselves. We, uh, we still don't know what we want. And I won't say, like, there's obviously a lot of, um, there are organizations that are very mature in this space, obviously like large, usually large tech orgs. Smaller organizations are not. And, part, and I think that's definitely part of the problem, is just the folks that are running, that are leading these smaller organizations don't necessarily either understand it. Again, I, I don't want to generalize, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas. Whose fault is it? I think it's everyone's fault, to be honest. Data science is complex, right? And um, I, I found some research, I found some publications which are really interesting, which is where I'm drawing sort of the second part of this talk. And uh, so Orit Hazan and Mike, uh, that's his last name, I forget his first name. They, uh, Orit is a researcher at Technion in Israel. Um, they, she's done a lot of publishing around data science education. And um, one of the things that they argue, and, and I actually think it's, it's kind of right, is like data science is, is actually, hard, data science is hard to define. We, we all know that. But here we have sort of some concrete um, talking points. So data science, be defined as a science, where you can sort of think of it as continuation of empirical science traditional data analysis. It could be a research paradigm, a new approach to conducting research. It could be a method, that, or a research method, right? Again, there are nuances to these definitions. I'm not going to get into the point. I just want to show you this. We've all known that this is a very complex topic. It, it's, sub, it's made up of complex subsets of topics. And yeah, when we, we've made a big mess. So it could be a discipline. It could be a workflow. It could be a professor. It could be any one of these. It could be either. It could be, it, it, and it's, these are not mutually exclusive. It could be a little bit of both. So you see the difficulty, right? And, you know, I've been doing this for over 15 years, and I know a lot about a lot. Am I a master in all these different areas? No. It's hard. It's hard. It's difficult. There are nuances. There are new tools. There are new technologies. There's a set of core skills that you need to have, which I'm going to get to in a second. And like I said, teaching this stuff is hard. So if you're a leader, if you're a manager, if you're a founder, and you're looking to hire entry-level folks, please have some empathy on these folks. 
please have some empathy on the folks that are training these people because we work really hard to make sure that these students are well trained. Because we have to understand, we have to unpack this very complex topic into manageable pieces and we have to build the skills in a scaffolding way. And I'll give you some examples, right? I teach two classes. I teach a data visualization class and I teach a big data and cloud computing class which I've been teaching for a long time. The first time I taught the big data class, right, it was, it was mostly Hadoop. This was in kind of 2014-15. You know, I get a bunch of, uh, of uh, anxious, yeah, not anxious, they're uh, they, uh, eager. I want to get a bunch of eager students in the classroom. We start talking about Hadoop, whatever, and I, all right, open your laptops and let's go to the terminal, the command line. What's the command line? So I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to sort of take a step back and start the class the next semester with like, all right, here's an introduction to Bash and to Linux and to the command line. And guess what? This is your friend because not only are you going to do stuff with big data, you're going to use Git, you're going to do file operations, you're going to do all sorts of stuff. It's like, it's about being computationally um, aware, right? And, and, a lot of the, and a lot of these skills, like a lot of these programs, and I know this because I've been part of teaching at a program, I've, I've seen the program evolution because of the changes that we've been able to make where these, a lot of these programs, and again, I'm speaking for the programs that I'm affiliated with. I don't know if there's any other instructors in the room. If there are, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, but, you know, a lot of these started as just like, hey, let's just throw a bunch of courses on the wall and see what sticks. And there was no continuity between them. So you get all of these different mishmash of skills and, and no, no scaffolding. All right, anyway, the point is that teaching the stuff is hard. Okay, so what would a data scientist do in this? In this? <laughs> All right, so obviously as a good data person, right, I, uh, I did some preliminary research, I gathered some data, I processed my data, uh, I didn't do a survey, um, I, I, you know, we could, but you know, we didn't, I didn't have time. But duh, I used generative AI to help me prep this presentation. <laughs> Because I had a lot of, you know, basically here. So I looked, I went back to this a couple of weeks ago when I was prepping the talk, and I was surprised. Cite, you know, the analyzing the analyzers cited by 146. I mean, that, I'm not a researcher. I don't know if that's a big number or it's a small number, but it's greater than one. <laughs> and actually, and a lot of the materials that I used to prep this talk cite our work. So we did something right at the time. Okay, and, and what I did is I took some of the work, again, the Hazan, Arit Hazan and Mike, uh, I forget his first name, uh, Tom Davenport has quoted our work, um, uh, um, the KDD guy, Us Usama Fayyad has quoted our work, um, like a lot of actually prominent figures in, um, in uh, the, the book, uh, the book written by Kathy O'Neill and Julia, and um, one of like data science practitioners, it was an O'Reilly book, they've quoted our work. So our work has actually been quoted, because we were the first ones to sort of propose we didn't really propose a model, but what we said, look, this is what the data shows. And some of those clusters are still relevant today. So what I found is there actually had been some academic research done, um, major academic research, mostly outside of the US. The biggest work is this one, it's called the Edison Data Science Framework. Um, they did it in Europe and I was surprised because I actually hadn't heard of any of these, to be honest. But what I found is when I actually started reading through these, uh, through these studies, They've, they identified a lot of like skills and competencies across many different dimensions uh, using a much more thorough methodology than we did at the time. But what I was, I was actually surprised to find that they're very similar. And what I was thinking about what's sort of valid today was corrupt, you know, not that I was looking for bias or I was, you know, you say when you're looking for something on the web, you'll find it. I wasn't, I, I was actually thinking about this and when I read this, it's like, oh, well, okay, so we're sort of thinking along the same lines. Anyway, I took all these things, I put it into a, a rag pattern, and I vectorized it, and I built actually a co-pilot, you know, or just a chat, a chat bot to help me summarize a lot of these ideas because I've been working on this enough for a couple of weeks, but anyway. So I built a rag. Again, new skill, right, today. <laughs> um, now here's the problem, right? You know, standards, we don't, want to, we don't want to just develop any additional standard because standards perpetuate, and the things that like standards do need to evolve. Now, there have been some standards proposed already. Again, this one says like there's 14 standards. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, look, no, there are 15 competing standards. This is, this is essentially like the crux of what I want to get to. Data science is hard, okay? And it's hard because you can't really treat it as a set of skills. Yeah, a set of skills, you do need the skills. Well, it's not necessary, but if you think about this idea of skills versus competencies, a skill is sort of like a basic thing, right? Maybe I'm, I'm a skilled Python person, or a, a still skilled Python developer, or maybe I'm a skilled R developer, or maybe 
you know, skills is around tools. It's about like mastering like one specific area. Competencies is a set of skills together. And knowledge, skills, and competencies together really gives you the ability to be effective. So it's this middle part. So think of the types of tasks that you're going to do as a data practitioner, whether you're a data scientist or you're a machine learning person, whether you're a data engineer, it's all about the outcome, right? It's about the task. It's about what am I trying to accomplish? And what are the things that are going to enable me to accomplish this? And it's a combination of knowledge, which, you know, both formal and informal, um, skills and competency. And these, are, these actually all feed off one another. So this is also proposed, this is, um, so these folks, uh, Cuadrado Gallego and Demchenko, they actually compiled all the work that the Edison Data Science Research Study did. And this is just, again, a very basic summary. I do have links to this in the presentation later. I try to cram a lot of stuff here. Now, if you look at all of the different models over time, you know, I sort of write about all these things, kind of the ideas that, that we had proposed initially and sort of like where we are, I kind of see uh, again, this is my attempt of building a, a sort of a scaffolding or a mental model around competencies, right? And there's two layers here. There's a competency layer, which is all the stuff in the, in the box. Sorry if it's a little small, I'll walk through it. And then there's a thinking, kind of higher level thinking, which comes from here. Now, the idea is this. I'm kind of going to go over here. So, I believe that there's a baseline set of skills that every data practitioner needs to have. Now, this is not comprehensive by any means, but at a minimum, this, this in this box, you have to master because without this, anything else, you can't, you sort of can't do the rest. I'll give you an example, right? Um, you know, whatever, you go, so I'll give you, again, very sort of dorky example, but you teach someone to build a classifier on the iris data set, right? We all love the iris data set, don't we? Or the penguins data set. All right, or whatever, what's a big data set for classification? I don't know. The New York taxi is a, is a regression, but anyway. Um, you can't, you can't build a machine learning model with R or Python if you don't know like basic computational skills, if you don't know the basic programming skills, right? Like you, you can't get here if you don't know here. Crawl, crawl, walk, crawl, walk, run. On the other side of this, so think of this like as a, I don't want to call it a sandwich, but, but these are like different layers. On the other side of this, I, I think that, um, and again, the different sources talk about this idea of 21st century skills, which is, it's a set of, skills that are probably relevant anywhere you work these days, right? It's not just about data science, but it's like combining both of these because they do feed off one another. So things like communication, right? Interpersonal skills, being able to understand one another. Uh, ethics is a big one, right? Because you, if you're using these tools and these models, you have to understand what the implications of those, what, what decisions you're gonna make based on that. The other thing I really like is uh, decision intelligence. Um, so if you've heard uh, Cassie Kozerkoff, she used to be Google's chief decision scientist. She left to do her own thing. She's talked a lot about this. Um, I follow her work. Uh, I've talked to her a few times about this. And I think, again, like this is the ability to, I'll define these a little bit later. These are kind of, these come from the Edison study. So the Edison study sort of did find like these verticals right within the data space that are competency slash skills based. This shouldn't be a surprise. All right, because these have been around for a while. Um, so obviously data science and analytics, which is the typical thing like you know, model building, data analysis, like the th typical things that a data scientist will do that are in addition to this. Data engineering, obviously building data infrastructure, right? Building, maintaining, tooling, infrastructure sort of thing. Data governance and management, we've heard a lot about that today uh, in different talks. Research methods and project management. They lump both of these together, but you know, research methods is about just traditional research and that sort of thing. Um, and I added this one called generative AI, but really think of this as like this other. And there's probably going to be multiple of these, right, over the course of time. And then at the bottom, you have domain. So you have to know the domain. Like you sh you, I don't want to say you have to. You should. You should understand the domain that you are working in because that's going to feed back into anything that you do. Right? So notice that I'm not talking at any point here around tooling because tools are just an enabler. Right? Tool, tools evolve, tools change. Competencies also evolve, but you can, do a comp, you can execute and have a competency using a myriad of tools. So it's a combination of things. So I'm gonna, and then there's three levels of thinking. There's computational thinking, statistical thinking, and domain thinking. How am I doing on time? Five minutes? Five minutes. All right, so I'll probably breeze through these because I will share these slides, but um, I sort of, these are just a very, very high level summary 
of all of the different things. I've created a little roadmap at the end to show you sort of where we are. But in base data competencies, um, this is my thinking. It's like, all right, you need to have data literacy. What does data literacy mean? Just you know, being able to use data effectively. Whatever, like, again, I know this is very broad, but whatever that means. It's being able to use it in the right domain, you kind of assess, you know, kind of pass the smell test. This looks right, this looks wrong, okay? Uh, capacity to interpret and analyze data, that's like obvious. Um, comp competence to create knowledge from data and the proficiency to communicate. On the programming side, again, not tool specific, right? But I think that you need to, uh, to be an effective data per practitioner today as a base skills. You need to know enough programming in whatever your tool of choice is, uh, whether it's R, whether it's Python, whether it's Rust, whatever it is. So obviously you wanna know how to utilize create modular functions, right? Like you were, when you're writing the same, kind of quote, quote, quoting uh, Hadley Wickham, right? If you write the same piece of code three times, create a function, right? Um, write modular code, right? This is really important because it's very different when you write code on your laptop than when you're actually gonna take that code, package it up, and put it in a production system or ship it or, or talk to an API. Uh, metaprogramming, I mean, this, this comes a lot from the, I'm a big R user, I'm a big R advocate myself, so metaprogramming, I know it, like, w there's a lot of metaprogramming in R, and it's like everything becomes data. Five minutes? Okay. Everything is data at the end of the day, like your data is data, your metadata is data, and there's like a meta meta layer that's also data, so you can treat all of these things as a, as a data frame. And you can do all sorts of things, and you can automate code, you can automate code generation, you can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, again, run a script unattended, again. Uh, data wrangling, so guys, um, <laughs> G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. Yes, we do spend a lot of time doing this, but data wrangling is extremely important. I don't care what anybody says. If you can't create an analytical data set for either machine learning or data visualization or any downstream analytics, I mean, half the battle is getting to that analytical data set. And that requires wrangling. And wrangling requires pulling data from different systems, right? Whether they're local or on-prem or in the cloud, different file types, yada, yada. You see, so you see how extensive this starts getting? Right? Okay. Uh, these are some competences. So again, co there's some competence like re involves reasoning and memory, uh, interpersonal dealing with capacity to manage one's behavior, interpersonal uh, communication and collaboration, ethics, and, and decision intelligence, which I named briefly. Uh, data analytics competencies, again, we, these most of you probably know, but I'm just quoting them. Uh, data engineering is the application of engineering principles and modern computer technologies to implement, manage, store, produce, et cetera, data. Uh, these are the data management and governance ones. Uh, this really talks about building data strategy, like understanding who has access to what and when, maintain historical information. Research methods, again, sort of the ability to apply research methods, kind of do traditional type research tasks. And again, you may not be doing all of these, so they are a little bit different in sort of scope, but you have to have these basic competencies, in my opinion. This one is just like a general one. Again, I just put in here generative AI because that's what's hot right now because we're all doing it in some way, form, or another. Like I said, I, I used it to create, to, to summarize a lot of thinking into creating this talk. And these are the higher level thinking. So uh, um, Hazan and Mike and some other folks, they sort of talk about data thinking. Like data thinking sort of in a broad sense integrates computational thinking, statistical thinking, and domain thinking. So on top of a competency, it's really like a thinking model where uh, computational thinking is cognitive and social skills applied in problem solving, whether you use a computer or not. Statistical thinking, again, I think we've hammered that one to death. And then domain thinking, going back to Drew Conway's original Venn diagram, right? You do need to have an understanding of the domain that you're in because certain assumptions may or may not work. And you know, a lot of the skills are transferable. You can do data science in one domain and you can move to another domain and still do that, but you still need to understand the domain. A lot of the other stuff is transferable, not necessarily the domain. Here we go again. <laughs> Tech job interviews are out of control. This was actually from a recent Wired, both Wired and Wall Street Journal. So, a, okay, AI talent is, demand is, is here. Now, nowhere does it say, right, what they're considering to be IT jobs or AI jobs. Like, what is an AI job today? Can I write or can I just create a chatbot? Is that an AI job? You know, do I need to train an LLM? Is that an AI job? Do I just run API? Like, again, <laughs> a lot of uncertainty, a lot of confusion. And we're sort of we're back to the same place. And then there was this one. I saw this one this week um, at the Atlantic. They, um, they were saying that a lot of computer science programs, not necessarily data science programs, but computer science programs in several major universities like MIT, um, I forget, they quoted MIT and, and another one, 
we're saying that, uh, first of all, computer science is taught all across different departments, and they don't necessarily talk one another. But they were talking about how uh, they, in one school, they gave students an option of taking computers. Oh, because the problem is like it's so popular, right, that the courses get filled up, the majors get filled up, so people are trying to do it through other. So in one school, they were offering like computer science and linguistic or languages or something. And if you wanted to go that route to learn computer science, you had to also to learn French. But most people opted to sort of go the other route because they didn't want to learn French. So I think that as data people, we still need to have culture, right? We still need to be like broad-based thinking in terms of culture domain because all of these things matter. And I'm going to get the boot in one second. <laughs> uh, call to action, folks. Let's prioritize. Like, okay, never mind. We got to do something about this. Um, Here's my list of references. Again, uh, some technical notes. So I integrate, did this with Dali. I built my RAG, and I also use Quarto. If you haven't used Quarto for creating technical documentation, highly, highly recommend it because you can do literate programming. This was created. I wrote Markdown, converted it to HTML, and that's what I'm presenting over here. So, all right, folks, who's with me here? Thank you. <laughs>